Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Um, this feels like a truly Dallas Cowboys thing to do. Um, you know, we got rid of, of course, Amari Cooper, and Amari Cooper, I think, is, what, 27 years old? Um, you know, cost a bunch of money and things. And I think there's still more to the Mari Cooper situation than just the money with it. I think that it may be that, that he wasn't the Dallas Cowboys kind of player that they were looking for. And maybe there was some kind of stuff between him and Dak or whatever that just didn't mesh. <clears throat> Regardless, the Cowboys get rid of him and basically get a ham sandwich, a fifth round pick. Um, which you look at now, and it's kind of like you see Devontae Adams and you see uh, Tariq Hill, how much it's netted for their teams. I mean, you think about the Giant, excuse me, the Packers and um, Kansas City both having, you know, first round and second round picks, two of them. It's kind of crazy. But be that as it may, there's word that the Cowboys are interested in T.Y. Hilton. And I know where your mind went. As soon as I said T.Y. Hilton, wow, T.Y. Hilton, man, I remember all the great games that T.Y. Hilton had. Man, that's going to be great. We're going to get T.Y. Hilton. See, this is the problem. It's name recognition. T.Y. Hilton, five foot ten, kind of a Smurf wide receiver, 32 years old, 32. And the last three years, last year, 23 catches, 331 yards. 2020, 762 yards. Um, 2019, 45 catches, 501 yards. You have to go back to 2018, uh, where he had 1,270 yards, to look at it and say, wow, that was a great season. I think uh, D2 Snoo, a.k.a. Mr. Wolf, said the best game he had last year was actually 80 yards. Now, course the Cowboys are interested in him again a value pickup um, I don't know that T.Y. Hilton is going to be a game changer um, for us but maybe this could be a right Randall Cobb situation because when Randall Cobb came in he had similar numbers to this the last couple of years where he had the bad man throwing to it at least where you look at um, T.Y., at least over the last couple of years, you look at having Andrew Luck and then Phillip Rivers and then Carson Wentz. Or, no, 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 I'm sorry. Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett was actually there. Or was it? I, it's just a mess. Every year is a different quarterback and probably a different system. So you could see some of that could be it. But when Randall Cobb came in, Randall Cobb was down to about 10 yards per reception. All of a sudden, with Dak Prescott, he bumped up to 14.9, which was the highest of his career. Um, maybe that'll be the situation there. But what this feels like to me more of is, I remember when the Cowboys signed Eddie George. Oh, my God. Everybody gets, let, let, let me look up Eddie George. A lot of you don't probably remember um, him being here with the Cowboys. But these are those ones that it's name recognition of a person that was a great player, but isn't is not indicative to where they are now. And so when we hired, you know, brought in Eddie George, and let me see if I can get his stats up here real quick. Um, when we hired Eddie George, guys were thinking, oh man, we got a bruising back and stuff. His last season, because because here's the problem, Eddie George. 2000, he was averaging 3.7 yards a carry, 403 yards. Tennessee Titans the next year, okay, um, averaged 300, I'm sorry, 3 yards a carry, 315 yards. The next year, 3.4 yards, and he ended up getting uh, 1,165 yards. And then um, the next year, the last year he was with Tennessee, 312 carries, 3.3 yards, got 1,031 yards. And then he comes to the Cowboys, and he still sticks with that 3.3 yards for 432. And you look at that and say, yeah, Eddie George was done. 
but it was the name recognition that you end up getting. This is, you know, when you hear JPP, oh man, JPP, man, I remember him, you know, killing the Cowboys. Um, Let me pull up his stats because these are ones that you kind of get tricked in. Now, 2020 was a decent year. Okay, actually, you say 2019, eight and a half sacks, 27 total tackles. Um, 2020, the Super Bowl year, he had 9.5. Last year, 2.5 sacks. And he was injured. So uh, are you thinking that he's going to jump back to 2019? Probably not. But, you know, that's the hope that you know, as Cowboys do, the only thing that I will say that has been good about what the Cowboys have done this offseason is bringing back some of the players that they have that understand the system. Understand we went from Mike Nolan with a bunch of players, and then we go to Dan Quinn, and we then all of a sudden bring in a whole bunch of new players. You need some time to build up that cohesion between the players to go ahead and get the best results. So bringing back a Carlos Watkins and bringing back a Van Der Esch and a Jalen Kurz and Anthony Brown, those guys will probably play better than a person who may have a little bit better skill set coming in here raw. Um, that's not to say they're going to be world beaters, but at least you can have Dan Quinn with familiarity. Guys understanding what Dan Quinn is about and what they need to do to work in the system. But T.Y. Hilton instead of Amari Cooper. JPP coming off surgery versus Randy Gregory. You have to look at these things as step downs in talent. You're not looking at improving themselves at all. These things are kind of stopgap more than anything else. And putting a wing and a prayer onto the draft picks. So we'll see what the Cowboys will, will be looking at. Right now, we've seen the Cowboys uh, looking at offensive linemen, looking at linebackers, and um, we'll see what other visits the Cowboys have. The one thing about the Cowboys is they usually bring in guys that they're going to keep, or you see me draft. Um, da 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 da. Micah Parsons, just a real one. He can sit down and kick it with you and forget uh, he's the coach. Look, look, hey back. He's got Concord. Jo what, what? What? Gina, what is that from Micah? He must be talking about Dan Quinn or what? I I don't. Get it. Okay, Dan Quinn hanging out. Okay, I got you. Okay, so it's a picture of Dan Quinn hanging out at the uh, pro day. Yeah, that's what it is. Dan Quinn, of course. Dan Quinn. He is a, a, a hell of a coach. He is the kind of coach that you like to, to hang with, that after practice, hey, let's go get something to eat, man, together and stuff. And uh, we're lucky to actually have him. All right. We'll see what happens with JPP, uh, You Know Me, and T.Y. Hilton. Okay? Not the Sheraton, but the Hilton. Peace.